Hi everybody, Melissa from MelissaVersusFarmerAlta.com here and we are going to talk the top 10 things in my self-help for fibromyalgia pain toolkit. That was a bit of a mouthful, but we are going to talk practical things we can do ourselves to help manage pain at home. Now, I am a big fan of things that we can do ourselves, no matter whether or not we have no medication, some medication, or a lot of medication, there is no way that it controls all of the pain. So having things that we can do ourselves at home is wonderful. So any number of these could be a wonderful addition to your toolkit. Now remember we're talking lived experience. This is my experience and there's also research to back it up, but you're going to have to look into these things and decide whether you want to try them, whether you want to discuss it with your physical therapist or your doctor, it's all up to you, but let us get started. So the first thing, which you could probably guess is coming, is yoga. Now, they're in no particular order, but this one is number one. And I want you to first dispel any ideas of what you think yoga is and come with me on this little journey here. Now, yoga is fantastic if you use it in the right way for your body and what you need. So you can do gentle stretches. So if a lot of us have back tension, neck tension. So gentle stretches are really wonderful. Uh, very gentle routines where it's breath focused is really great for um, calming the nervous system while getting a little bit of gentle exercise and movement to our body. Uh, but the best practices for us, in my opinion, are the ones that are much less physical. So restorative yoga. Uh, or breathing practices and yoga nidra guided meditation which is my absolute number one so if you click through um, to the blog post from wherever you're consuming this you will have lots of links for how to um, look into it further including my free micro course which will give you an example of each of the four types of classes I recommend you try the next one is trigger point work. So if you have chronic trigger points like I do, you will know the value of being able to help yourself because you can take medicine, you can see a physical therapist, you can do all the things, but you're still going to need to do some self-management. So I provide a lot of resources on how to help manage trigger points at home, uh, but a couple of my most favorite tools are the Theracane trigger point massager and a peanut ball. These are both really inexpensive. The peanut ball I have was like under $10. Uh, it's just this little thing that you massage over your trigger points and it is fantastic. But you can also do gentle massage and there are also stretches you can do. If you look up the trigger point manual, um, you'll find a book that talks you through all of the trigger points. The next thing is heat. Um, specifically heating pads or microwavable heat packs. They have been fantastic for me for a long time. They're one of the first tools that I had and I still use them every single day. Essential oils. So I love using essential oils and I keep a little um, roller bottle in my bag at all times. It's my first line of defense. Uh, if you put it on and then massage it in, it is wonderful. My favorite combination is peppermint, copaiba and frankincense with a little bit of coconut oil. Um, but there's a world there for you to research. Peppermint is also good when you have headaches. So topical lotions. This is another kind of the same as the essential oils, but something else. Uh, deep heat is my favorite, but there are loads of things to try. Again, if you're mixing, uh, mixing it with massage, then you've got double bang for your buck. Uh, the next thing is magnesium. So magnesium is recommended for everything from sleep to migraine to pain management. It's inexpensive, has a low side effect profile, uh, too much of the um, tablet or capsule form can have a laxative side effect, so make sure you're watching what the recommendation, uh, recommended doses are, um, but they are, it, magnesium is well proven to help us. Now my next one is one that I've got... Um, a video about and a blog post about and it's helped me a lot it's recovery factors supplement so it's a porcine protein serum it's helped me with um basically i've got my iron levels up for the first time ever and it helps with protein uh and it has just been wonderful for me uh to increase energy and decrease pain uh and you can learn more about it i'll provide links for you the next one is low dose naltrexone. So I've talked about this a lot. I have a lot of trainings on it, a lot of information on it because I want you to hear about it. It has literally changed my life. It's often misunderstood because at full dose it does something completely different, but at low doses it helps conditions like fibromyalgia, MS, chronic fatigue syndrome, and much more. And this medicine has given me so much improvement with almost no side effects. 
uh, and it's estimated by practicing physicians who provide it um, to their patients that it helps around 60% of patients with fibromyalgia. Uh, so that is another important one uh, that we have control of. So uh, we have to play with the dose and all that, but you can learn more good things about it in the connected blog post. Now, rest and sleep. Oh my friend, this is so important, okay? I will smack anyone down who tries to say that you are not allowed rest and sleep, okay? People who say you'll sleep when you're dead or that it's some kind of rite of passage to be exhausted when you've got small children. Slap them down, my friend. You deserve rest and sleep. Our bodies need it. Every single person in this world needs rest and sleep. We all need it in different ways, but for us with chronic energy issues and chronic pain issues, we need rest and sleep. Um, so for me, yoga nidra guided meditation is super important. Uh, it is the most perform, uh, profound form of rest I've ever found. And when I do it uh, in the afternoon, it helps me get through the evening. It reduces my pain, reduces my fatigue. Uh, and the brain waves that happen during yoga nidra, they mimic those brain waves of sleep, uh, like going into those deeper stages, which can be very difficult for us. Um, so even after 10 years working on this, trying different medicines and different supplements, and even with impeccable sleep hygiene, I rarely get more than the bottom of the normal range for deep sleep. But that's where the good stuff happens. So prioritize it, experiment with it, work with your doctor, keep going because that's going to help enormously. Uh, and as part of that, that's like pacing. So use the energy you have well. So have good um, use of the energy you have, but good rests. Uh, so lots more details there as well. And I've got a whole pacing training for you. And the last one is self-efficacy. This is what this whole thing is about, right? It is simply knowing that we can help ourselves. We have the power to make a difference. Little choices every day can make a difference. And if you try anything from this list, I believe that you'll make a difference for yourself. And that's what I want for you. That's why I share all this stuff. That's why I spend all this time creating videos, writing blog posts, all of it. I want this to help you. I don't want you to spend as long as I did with no help. So tell me, which of these are you already doing? Which of these do you want to look into adding to your toolkit? Which areas do you need to learn more about? I've been working really actively on sleep recently, so I need to do an update for you on that. Uh, but I've got loads of blog posts, loads of um, links to extra information for you. So check out that blog post. Thank you so much for um, being here. Let me know how did you like this video and let me know what other topics you would like me to delve into. Catch you later.